and that is totally contrary to our to our um, agreement at treaty time. And then in 1985, Canada, through Bill C-31, separated membership and status. So today we have people who have membership rights and status rights, that membership and status. We have people, our peoples, our descendants, who have just membership, and we have people that just have status. So they broke it up, and that's in total contradiction to the treaty agreement, to our agreement at treaty. We, as in the treaty indigenous peoples, have never consented to all of this taking place unilaterally by the government of Canada. In 1982, at the patriation of the Constitution Act of 1982, Canada's constitution states they, that Section 35 states that treaty and, treaty and Aboriginal rights are hereby confirmed, recognized and confirmed. Now, that says that we're going back to our inherent rights, so which are Aboriginal rights as, as uh, set by the government under the Constitution, our inherent rights. So we were to continue passing our treaty status to our descendants with no limitation. When Prime Minister Trudeau was campaigning, he said he wanted a new nation-to-nation -nation relationship with the Indigenous peoples. He, he, when nothing was more important to him than the Indigenous peoples, his relationship with the Indigenous peoples. He said that before the election, of the Canadian election, and then he said that post-election. He also said that he would respect the court decisions that were done over the past years. He would also review legislations that impacted the indigenous peoples. And all of those legislations like the matrimonial law property, the Transparency Act, uh, all of those laws, the uh, uh, National uh, Securities Act, all those laws to save drinking water, all interfere in our jurisdiction in our authority as sovereign nations, authority as sovereign nations. They interfere in our lives. So it was great for us to hear that because over all these decades of years, since treaty making, no government has ever made that promise to us and, be so st and seem to be so strong. To date, nothing has happened. In fact, many of the indigenous peoples and ran into uh, ran for office in, in the election system, hoping to uh, assist us, assist their peoples to correct the relationship that we have with Canada. But nothing has happened. So, and, and Canada has not reviewed their legislation. We take every opportunity we can is to notify or teach or inform Canada that we are sovereign peoples and we have complete jurisdiction over our citizenship and our territories and our lands. But Canada has never really listened to us. So we thought Justin Trudeau was going to open that door and be true to his words to sit down with us. The treaty indigenous peoples have never had the opportunity to sit down with the government of Canada or even with the governor general, who is the representative of the Crown, to sit and listen to us to address this new relationship that Justin Trudeau is talking about. But we've always done whatever we can to, to inform Canada the true history of our territories, of this land, and the true history or the true information about who we are as peoples. The United Nations recognizes as peoples, they passed a declaration. Minister Bennett at the UN conference in New York stated that Canada has endorsed the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples without qualification. That was encouraging. So how is that going to be done? And when you look at the Desjardins case or this current uh, last amendment to the Indian Act with respect to Indian status, 
Well, if you look at the declaration, it's contrary to what they said they've adopted. Mr. Bennett meant her words that she said at the, U at the United Nations, then she would not be amending the Indian Act on status. She would be sitting down with the treaty Indians to address how treaty cards can be reinstated and which we can, we can pass on to our future generations. We're different from maybe other, other status Indians across Canada. That's up to them to deal with it. But treaties 1 to 11 peoples can only speak to the relationship they have with Canada as based on our treaty with the Imperial Crown. As of September the 4th, 1951, when it was changed to Indian status, anyone born before then is a treaty Indian. After 19, September 4th, 1951, there are no more treaty Indians. So when our last indigenous person who is treaty born before then dies, there'll be no more treaty Indians. This is critical to our, our treaties and to our, our territories of who we, and who we are. After treaty, uh, after uh, treaty making, our peoples used to line up. I remember the story where my mom said that the headman or the chief would have all these people stand behind him and say, these are my people. And that's when this treaty money was given out and they were added to the list. And that treaty money of five dollars was not, uh, was intended as a greeting gift because in our customs and in our ways, when you first meet someone or you make an agreement with someone, you give them a gift. So that was the gift from the Imperial Crown to us, to our peoples. So, and and then those people were added on the list without qualification. It's just that our leadership, our chiefs, our headmen said, these are my people, and they were added on. One of the provisions of every treaty in the world, uh, I gather, is that uh, from time to time you would sit down to discuss the treaty relationship to see whether or not it's working uh, areas that are not working, uh, where we could uh, uh, ensure that uh, both co parties come to an understanding. However, uh, in our history, and this is not from the, anybody's book, but this is from uh, the elders that I have worked with for many, many years, interviewing them, sitting down, talking to them. Uh, one of the things they <clears throat> informed me was that uh, Every year after the treaty was entered into, there was huge treaty gatherings. And in our area in Treaty 6, uh, where I come from, it was either Sounding Lake, Fort Pitt, Fort Carleton, uh, areas where uh, people got together and it was treaty time, treaty day. And uh, uh, the commissioners, uh, the Queen's people would, would come and actually uh, pay out the, the treaty money. And uh, a thing that people need to understand about that $5, it's not just the $5. The $5 is a symbol of the, that the treaty would uh, car carry on. By no means is it a payment. And uh, I think we need to understand that. And at treaty time, it also gave, gave the opportunity of the commissioners of the Crown or the Indian agents, the people that came there, to sit down with the leaders of the day and discuss the treaty. But back in uh, 1885, uh, the incident in Frog Lake and subsequently the Real Rebellion, uh, a lot of our nations were uh, uh, labeled as uh, rebel, rebel band. Uh, Beaver Lake was one of them. Our leadership was suspended. Uh, our uh, uh, treaty entitlements were discontinued for about four years, and that's still an issue that we have to uh, uh, resolve. We haven't went there yet. However, after that time, the Crown used that as an excuse to uh, divide and conquer. Remember, they used to have the huge treaty gatherings. 
now they instituted a process whereby uh, the nations were paid at the reserve that was uh, uh, surveyed. And you have to remember, in some cases, uh, these reserves were not surveyed until the 1900s. So there's a huge uh, lapse of uh, time and uh, ability to talk treaty uh, between 1885 and subsequent, uh, uh, I guess, uh, people taking up uh, uh, the reserved lands where they uh, wanted to stay uh, in this new uh, way of uh, life. Uh, so what happened then to, uh, I'd say about 1995, that's, what, that's about 100, 110 years, was finally when we put the treaty bilateral process in place. So we didn't talk about treaty for many, many years, over 100, 110 years. So um, the point I'm trying to make on that is that uh, uh, the nations of Treaty 6 were uh, matriarchal uh, societies and in the course of the relationship with the, the people of the crown they supplanted or superimposed their uh, patriarchal society on us and um, and that's a lot of the reasons why when they developed the Indian Act that that is the way that they looked at uh, our societies uh, they superimposed their patriarchal system on our matriarchal systems that we, that we had in place and hence that uh, created a, a huge problem. So the laws that they put in place for the most part uh, that is their law and that is their mistake.